In our previous videos, we spoke about the Kiridi excavations that have pushed the known timelines of ancient Tamil civilization by three centuries to about 580 BCE. And we spoke about other artifacts that have given us a fascinating peek into the lifestyle of Kiridi people. Despite all these finds, archaeologists were hesitant to call Kiridi a residential settlement. You see, while they did find remains of many structures, none of them could be classified as houses. Also, there is no evidence of any place of worship, at least none that have been discovered yet. But most puzzling of all was the fact that they found no human bones at Kiridi. Usually, inhabited sites throw up a lot of human bones, but at Kiridi, they found none at all. Could Kiridi have been an industrial site? Then, as archaeologists expanded the area under excavation, they reached a village called Kondagai, not far from Kiridi. And this is what they found there. Archaeologists think that Kondagai is the burial site of Kiridi. And this kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The burial site is not in the heart of Kiridi, but on the outskirts. At Kondagai, they found not just bones, but full skeletons and burial urns. What are burial urns and what deathly tales do they tell us? In this video, we'll explore the funeral customs and practices of ancient Tamils, not just at Kiridi, but also at other excavation sites across Tamil Nadu. The Kondagai excavation is only two seasons old, but already archaeologists have discovered many well-preserved skeletons and over 40 burial urns. What exactly is a burial urn? Sometimes after cremation, the ashes are collected and stored in an earthen jar called a burial urn. Burial urns have been used by civilizations across the world, in China, Greece and parts of Europe. At the Indus Valley sites too, archaeologists have discovered beautifully decorated burial urns. Ancient civilizations across the world have dealt with the idea of death in their own unique ways. The Egyptians, for instance, believed that the dead had to be carefully preserved. The pharaohs were laid to rest in pyramids, while lesser mortals were buried in the earth. Quite often, the objects they used in their lifetime were also buried with them. We call such goods grave goods. And these objects can tell archaeologists a lot about these societies. Closer home, the Indus Valley civilization covered a very large area. And so, in different places and at different points in time, a wide range of funeral practices can be seen. Burial was a common practice back then. Ancient Hindus, Buddhists and Jains believed in the concept of rebirth. And so, after the Indus Valley, cremation was the norm in many places. But then again, funeral practices differed from region to region. So how did the ancient Tamars deal with death before the Common Era? Ancient literature tells us of funeral practices that were common back then. Sudavor refers to those who cremated the dead, like most Hindus do today. Todukuri Padupur refers to those who used pit burials. This is where a pit is dug and the body is lowered into it, like the burials practiced today. Back then, stone memorials were an important part of many rituals. Archaeologists have discovered numerous hero stones buried near water bodies across South India. We know that this was a common custom in Tamil Nadu as far back as 1000 BCE. Virakkal, or stones of the brave, were usually carved to commemorate someone who died a hero's death. Who were these heroes? Some of the oldest hero stones honoured men who died protecting cattle. Several hero stones have been found depicting men wrestling a tiger or other large jungle cats. Later, it became common to erect hero stones for soldiers who had died in battle. Some hero stones were memorials to men who had voluntarily offered their heads as sacrifice to the village deity, all for the greater good of the village. These stones depict a man holding a sword to his neck. It is believed that this act brought victory in battle. This is another type of memorial stone. It is called the Nishiddhi stone. These stones were erected in honour of Jains who had given up their lives by fasting unto death. The custom is called Salekhana and Jains believe that it is a way to break free from the cycle of birth and death. People who end their lives in this way are considered enlightened souls. The practice was so highly regarded 
that the place where they breathe their last would be considered a sacred spot and a nishidi stone would be erected there. Nishidi stones are worshipped and the practice of Salekhna is recorded in ancient Jain texts dating as far back as the 3rd century BCE. Another common practice of those times was to lay the body to rest on an open ground so that it could be acted upon by birds of prey and other natural elements. The bones were then buried in an urn. Archaeologists call this a secondary burial. Sangam literature refers to people who practice this custom as idovor. Sometimes the body was cremated and then the ashes were collected and preserved in urns like these with lids. Communities who used burial urns were called Taryir Kavipur. But sometimes these burial urns are used for primary burials as well. Sangam literature talks of one other type of burial, Mudumakkal Tari. In this, a very old and infirm person who has completely lost his faculties and does not have long to live is gently lowered into a large urn and looked after until death. Once he died, the pot itself was buried, sometimes with grave goods and even food. The practice of Mudumakkal Tari is said to be at least 3,000 years old. Evidence of this practice can be found in burial urns at a place called Korke near Tutukudi, and these date back to about 785 BCE. Korke was well known as an ancient Pandian port on the banks of the Porune River. More urns were discovered in Adi Chanallur a place close to Korkai. Carbon dating of various artifacts showed them to be from 905 to 696 BCE. The skeletal remains were largely of people in their 50s. Some of these urns had grave goods in them, like tools, weapons and grains. The grains in particular are a treasure trove. They are very useful to scientists for carbon dating. One recent discovery at a location along the Tamirabarni river created quite a stir. A grain of rice found in a burial urn there was scientifically dated to 1155 BCE. How exactly are they able to determine that? Carbon dating is based on the principle that all living things, humans, animals and plants exchange carbon with the atmosphere in their lifetime. When a creature dies, it stops absorbing carbon from the atmosphere. One isotope of carbon, C12, remains stable in the body while another isotope, C14, begins to decay. So, by studying the ratio of C12 to C14, scientists are able to estimate an artifact's age with a high degree of accuracy. At the Kiridi excavation sites, the greatest challenge that archaeologists face is the contamination of these skeletons with present-day organic material. Since they are out in the open, it is possible that stray dogs may just dig up these bones, and then it would be almost impossible to accurately carbon date them. So, archaeologists treat these 2,600-year-old skeletons like buried treasure, keeping them covered carefully and keeping a watchful eye over them at all times. You can probably see now why archaeologists have a ghoulish fascination with graves. Dead men definitely tell tales. And sometimes these graves can tell us a lot about well, about the lives of people who lived in these parts hundreds or thousands of years ago. Excavations at Kiradi and the villages around are still in progress. And there is every chance that more discoveries will push our understanding of the oldest settlements in South India even further. Did you like that story? Do like, share and subscribe to our channel and we'll be back with many more such videos.